Yo, yo, what is up, guys? Welcome back to your brand new PSGL video. This is round oh, number it's, uh, quite busy. 11 around Spa Francorchamps. And as you can see, it's traffic paradise at the start of Q1 here. Seven and a half minutes remaining, and there are about 15 cars in the final sector, so it's busy. And as you can see, there are the standings after Imola. Uh, we've gained a few points to the championship leader. Um, Barry Bormont, of course, we're now eight points behind. You can see you can see the point system in the top right. Um, and yeah, we're eight points behind, so that's basically half a race win uh, behind now. And today we're going to try and close the gap once again. Um, we have not won a race yet this season, which is a bit frustrating. But, um, yeah, we can try and change that today, of course. First Q1 run about to pop up. This last sector has taken absolutely ages. Probably around a minute. And tires are warmed up, though. Nicely into the correct window. And into turn one we go. Uh, down to third gear, trying to get that rotation in nicely. And then early on the power for such a long trade. Easy flat out through a Rouge and Radion. And uh, up to 8 gear. Will be flat out 8 gear, but unfortunately. I invalidated. We invalidated. So I decided to immediately back out of the lap and save the set of tires. Um, stupid place to invalidate, not gonna lie. You can easily uh, run a little bit wider and lose 100 of a second. But as you guys might also know, losing 100 of a second in this grid is absolutely crazy. So. Um, yeah, you can't have that mindset with uh, with a lot of corners, of course. That uh, turn one um, was a lot better, I think. So a lot more rotation through there. And this time we're going to take it a little bit wider through Rouge and Radion because we actually have to get a lap in here because we're down in P18. So the pressure is on and we have to perform on this lap. Um, not to mention we have to perform a good lap as well, not just a valid one. Otherwise, we will be out as the grid is insane. Um, so... Yeah, we have to uh, get it to get a purple first sector there as we head into sector two, uh, which shows that we probably have a lot of straight line speed or or um, turn one was really good. Uh, one of those or both of those, actually, as we uh, head into pool now. Taking it a little bit cautious, but at the same time, you cannot take it too cautious as well because you'll be out in Q1. As we saw last week in Imola, the top 13 being like within one tenth. Um, you need to get a good lap together. You cannot make any big mistakes. You cannot uh, invalidate one run, which is exactly what we've done. And that has put the pressure on for this final run. We're 1.6 tens up on Patrick Sipos at the moment as we head into the final sector. And um, it's, been a, it's been a clean lap, of course, as I said. It's been cautious, but it's been clean. No big mistakes. Decent speed. And now we just need to nail that final chicane, breaking just after 100 meters. Down to third gear we go. Trying to get some nice rotation in. And then early on the power to open up the DRS. And it is going to be a 140.415. Yeah, yeah, that's good enough for sure. Equal lap time with Freddy Rasmussen. And yeah, easy through into Q2. So, um, solid uh, last lap in Q1 there when the, when the pressure was on. Uh, I think we ended up in like P4, P5 there at the end of Q1. So... Uh, quite comfortably made it, made it through. And we also kind of saved a set of tires. Now, of course, we did have a little bit of wear on them, but if we do make it into Q3, then we do have that fresh set of tires. We can basically do, like, two new sets uh, of tire runs then. Uh, well, first one, probably a little bit of the pace, but the last one, of course, we will have a new set nonetheless anyway. Uh, first Q2 lap, we managed to get into P4 there, and now the pressure is on for the last one again, because track evolution around Spa is quite strong and that's purely because it's such a long track and um, there's so many corners and even if you gain only five one thousandths of a second it's gonna end up being quite a bit um, by the end of the lap so yeah we have to um, we have to improve for sure on this lap and the first sector was a 300 improvement no purple this time as we go through the Lacombe section a little bit wide in the middle there but we managed to improve another few hundreds, and that's just what we need. We just need to keep improving a few hundreds in every single corner. And that's what we're doing at the moment. A little bit wide through there, not a very clean section through there, actually. We lost a bit of time, and we're going to have to pick up the pace through the next half of the lap. And through pool one, equal time, no time gain, because it's easy, flat out. Now through the right and the left-hander, we get the front in nicely there. 
And early on the power, trying to correct the slides a little bit, and that's a half a ten improvement. Simply because we were slightly more on the limit. Early on throttle, the backhand wants to step out, and we are 1.19 tens up as we head into the final sector. Now, we are only P8 at the moment, and we're probably going to drop down out of the top 10. So all we need to do is just keep that 110 improvement, and we're going to actually go purple if we go on a 1.210 improvement into the final chicane. We go, breaking late once again. Backhand steps out a little bit, and it was a bit of an uncomfortable um, reaction. No way, man. Again in the last chicane. And we've actually dropped out of Q2 because of that, so... Very, very frustrating, because in 2021, I made the exact same mistake. Um, and you can see there, if we improve 1.2 tenths, we would have been P1 by two one hundredths of a second. And now we were out in Q2, and that's Jamardians. You cannot make any mistakes. Um, Nikos Longe ended up on pole. Luckily for us, Lucas Blakely and Barry Bormand made mistakes as well. And they are out in Q2, or biggest championship rivals. We've got Brandon in P5, of course. He is P3 in the championship, so that is not ideal. Um, but it's uh, it's frustrating. Like, we were the fastest. Oh, and soft. just such a tiny mistake in such a slow oh. speed corner costs so much time. And that threw away the lap for us. Now, into the race we go, though. We're going to be starting on the softs. Tom Manley out of us on the hearts. So is Wilson Huge. And we got Barry Borman, the championship rival in P12 on the softs as well. Lucas Blakely on the meaners bind into turn one. We go. We're going to send it down the inside. And we are ahead of the three cars on the outside. But I made sure to try and leave as much space as possible. Because I knew four wide into turn one was going to be very tricky. We all made it through uh, relatively cleanly, to be honest. Without any big contact. So um, now into uh, camel oh straight we go. I think I cut off Tom a little bit too late there, to be honest. But we managed to uh, both continue our journey. Lucas down the inside. We got down inside of Marcel. Made sure to, um, yeah, leave the space on the outside. I actually went a little bit wide. I got scared that I was going to run into them there. Um, but we've managed to keep it going and gain two positions in the opening sector. Now, Freddy um, ahead of us on the softs as well, or ahead of Marcel. And it would be nice if Freddy can cut through the field as well so we can follow him through both me and Marcel um, but it's easier said than done of course so Marcel runs a little bit wide there actually on the entry of Poulon um, and uh, lost a little bit of time now Freddy seems to not have made a lot of inner roads so far I think he started in P8 or P7 as well so uh, starting on the softs has not worked brilliantly for him we got Barry who has made the same positions as us and on to lap 2 we go. Now we've got Marcel sending it down the inside of Jake. Jake on the hearts, of course. Ma Freddy got past Jake as well. And we've got Nicolas oh, in the lead. Oh, this is no ideal, man. Um, with quite a margin. I think he's two seconds ahead of P2 at the moment. Oh. And yeah, he's just uh, driving over into the distance at the moment. And it looks like at the moment it's going to be an easy win for him. Now he's, of course, on the soft. What is Marcel on? And the people behind him are... Uh, on mediums, so um, it is quite a time gain with the softs, but... Um, I think it's why they're fighting each other and using ERS against each other. Um, and yeah, you could hear me say, I don't get why they're fighting so hard against each other, because they are of course teammates um, in real life. We are all part of the Mercedes F1 esports team, both me, Marcel, Jake and Danny Bresne. Um, but yeah, they're not really helping so each stupid. other here. Um, as Jake is of course on hearts, Marcel is on soft, so Marcel has a lot more grip at the moment, and I decided to instantly go for the attack as well. Um, because I wanted to get through as soon as possible to use these softs to my advantage. But unfortunately, I got a big oh snap of oversteer. And that was not ideal, because that made Jake lose another two extra positions. So, um, poor teamwork from all of us, not gonna lie. I made a big mistake there, and it cost Jake two positions extra. Then... Uh, what he should lose so uh, big mistake there on my part getting the big snap of oversteer in the middle of pool and as you can see there we were full lock <laughs> to the right mid corner um yeah no idea no idea uh, i i don't really understand why i got a snap of oversteer anyway i don't think we touched at all to be honest but on we go here at the end of lap 5 and we've got a full battery to use at the moment so we're quite comfortable here Marcel has used quite a bit of his battery so I want to go for a move here but unfortunately oh, oh my god man 
We got hit by Barry behind us, who overshot the corner. What the fuck even happened? Uh, while trying to defend from Lucas. And now we're gonna go side by side through a ruse, and it's scary! Um, I almost lost the rear there. As. That That's was no great. idea, that was really scary. Last time I went side by side with someone through there, I think the race ended. Uh, it was actually with Sebastian Job on F1 2021, I think so. But we move. On to the end of lap 7. First people boxing actually. Uh, actually, three people boxing at the end of lap 7. And that's quite early. Uh, especially considering their own mediums, of course. Um, they all want to go for the undercut. So, we are going to continue. Because um, I felt like lap 7 is way too early. There's no point in doing that. Oh, and then I had... Well, that's two anyway. Uh, Marcel, my teammate, boxing. And he can't box on the same lap, of course. So... That is um, frustrating, for sure, uh, because ideally that was the lap I wanted to pit on, but now we have to continue. We're going to let Lucas through, because he's on mediums and my softs are starting to drop off. So what I'm going to do is let him through here, and then on the next lap we can take his DRS and then probably box at the end of lap 10, because honestly he cannot do a lot more laps than 10 laps on a set of softs, um, because you're going to get close to a puncture. So. Uh, without Lucas room, no point in fighting this. Uh, we might as well work together from here on, actually. As Lucas goes a little bit wide into Lecomte. Uh, he is suffering from tire wear as well, of course. Um, just a little bit less than us. So, end of lap 10, um, we're going to be boxing, of course. You can see the rear tires don't want to grip up anymore. And we're going to be boxing for the mediums. Our teammate Marcel Kiefer. And a lot of people who boxed uh, at the end of lap 7, 8, went to hearts. Nicolas Longe box for mediums at the end of lap 9. Um, and yeah, as you can see there, he sets the fastest lap of the race. So um, actually, Nicolas might have boxed at the end of lap 8. I'm not sure, but not really relevant to us anyway at the moment. We just need to uh, get back to the front, close the gap. Of course, new tires gain you a lot of pace, but um, yeah, if you go... A lot earlier than the rest you're suffering the rest of the race and that's what everyone ahead of us is gonna have uh barry boxed at the end of lap nine so we're I'm gonna have both hearts one lap fresher tires than him um and we've got wilson actually on 10 lap old hearts as you can hear me say there he got an into, into an incident in the opening lap so uh, that's why he's so far behind and yeah his race is basically over respect to him to to be honest for finishing the race a lot of people don't do this um and honestly that that's great uh, from him. Uh, I think it's never over. There's always a chance of a safety car um, or, or for a massive pileup. You never know. I think, yeah, it's great for him or from him to uh, to keep going uh, at this point in the race, even though it looks like it's completely over. Uh, he's still uh, going strong. Barry Bormand ahead of us with the fastest lap of the race. And um, yeah, in the coming few laps, we're just going to keep gaining time. Uh, because our tires are fresh, I didn't push really hard for one lap, so we didn't get the fastest lap of the race. As that's actually Lucas boxing at the end of lap 13 for a new set of softs. So he started on the mediums, going to softs. We did the opposite, starting on softs, going to mediums. Um, and then we've got Thomas behind us, who boxed two lap, two laps later than us onto mediums. So I just used a bit to get in DRS. Uh, we're gonna get DRS uh, right here on lap 14, and. Unfortunately for us, uh, Marcel is not, tough, not too far away anymore. Um, and you might be thinking, why is it unfortunate? Uh, Barry is going to get DRS on the next lap. And ideally, we will pass Barry um, when he doesn't have DRS, of course, because that makes our life way easier. As we said, a new personal best in this race. Only one turn away from the fast lap, actually. Uh, so that was a very strong lap I mean, from us Barry, as as on these relatively old mediums uh, of course we did get DRS there and we used a little bit of our battery but we didn't push like crazy um, on relatively used uh, mediums four lap old mediums and as you can see there the slipstream effect isn't really strong into Lacombe it's just a DRS that's so strong but the slipstream effect not that so if you're stuck in a DRS tra train that makes it really difficult to uh, overtake of course and uh, halfway through lap 16 here Thomas has caught up to us and he's gonna go down the inside I'm gonna break deep though leaving the space on the inside and now uh, we managed to actually quite easily uh, stay in P9 and um, but it also means we need to go for a move here 
Um, because the people who box later than us are starting to catch up. So uh, we have to go for a move here soon. Otherwise we're going to be in trouble. Um, and as you can see I'm really close to Barry. Trying to push him to do something as well. Because he has a lot fresher tires than everyone had him ahead of him as well. As he sends it down the inside of Marcel. Marcel goes to the left. Freddy spins on the inside. And that is two positions in one for us. Thank you very much. Um, very lucky there to actually... Uh, gain two positions, not gonna lie. And we're into turn one now. Um, Thomas forgot there was a corner to the right there. And um, Pants is out of the way, so... Yeah, not ideal. Not ideal, not ideal at all. And... Um, uh, that's uh, an easy way to set me back, of course. And yeah, now, uh, this has cost us basically a half our battery that takes quite a while to save. And this is stopping us from making any inroads or making any overtakes up ahead. Um, because we had to defend again, simply because we got punted out of the way. So um, we're once again going to be stuck longer behind Marcel. And our tires are starting to degrade, of course, um, compared to the hard runners up front. And in a lap 18 here, midway through lap 18, Thomas turns into or in our rear wheel and we get sent wide and he ended up losing a position because of that so that was some proper karma I do have some replays uh, after the race to show I think it's uh, something I should do more oh, to be honest the same team. Um, how much does Lucas have? and I decided not to uh, no point. fight Lucas here because he's on new softs of course or relatively new softs and I just want to um, move forward in this race but it doesn't really seem to help if we get half taken out all the time and yeah, once again course. in the bus up chicane um nothing of course new. It's the same guy uh we got uh, sent out wide basically in the bus stop and i'm not sure why we were ahead at turn in we were ahead at the apex and his interest doesn't really seem to be with trying to get a good result. His only aim here is to ruin our race at the moment. Uh, I don't really get why, because we haven't done anything to him this race. Uh, last race around Imola, we raced cleanly, and now... I'm not sure what is going on in his head, but... Uh, exactly, get out. Come on. <laughs> I, I have no idea what he's doing, or why he's doing this. Uh, so now we're out of the DRS from Lucas, what and then... Guy, man. What a guy. Get him out of this league. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, an interesting Idiot. move as well. Uh, he, he basically dive-bombed us in a down or right, which has like a 30 meter braking zone. So, yeah, I'll show the replays after this. So, we've got some outboard shots, uh, which I'm going to do more in the future, to be honest. I think it's, uh, it's good to show more than just our POV from any incidents or crashes. Um, but yeah, that's 21 now. Um, we're still fighting Brendan actually, and Lucas got a three second time penalty, which will not be removed as far as I'm aware. So, we, um, we're gonna just sit back actually for a bit, because we're not gonna get Marcel for sure. We're just aiming to get Brendan here on the final lap. We got more ERS, because you could see him flash on Camel Stray there, and yeah, you can see him flash there. So. I'm just gonna let the DRS and the slipstream effect do its work and this is gonna be a relatively easy pass with the help of some overtake button into P6 we go with a net P5 and uh, yeah that's gonna be good points uh, especially because Lucas will be behind us Brendan will now be behind us and Barry will now definitely be behind us and they are all our championship contenders so somehow out of this extremely chaotic race where we basically we're two times close to completely spinning out and um, close to being taken out a few times as well. Um, we end up gaining big points in the championship. Now, Nicolas dropped down the order with a three-second penalty. But, however, um, the three-second penalty uh, will be removed. So, we drop down to P5. But, nonetheless, it's still going to be a good point gain. Uh, Ulas might be getting a penalty as well. Uh, I'm not sure yet at the moment. We will see. Um, but yeah, nonetheless, I think it was a good result from P11 on the grid, of course. Let's not forget that. And considering our race got ended quite a few times almost. And yeah, 
got some few offboard shots from these incidents as well. Um, because yeah, let, let, let's take this chicane for example. I, I turn in early, gave Thomas all the space on the outside. And you can see there, I'm actually taking a tight line in Marcel. But then Thomas turns into us, into a rear wheel. And anyone who has played that one game before knows that you're just going to get sent wide if someone does that. Uh, which is exactly what happened. It all, almost went three wide actually there. Um, and yeah, as I say, I don't race anyone with uh, hatred or anything. I want to win the race. And if I am going to try and ruin my own race by sending people off and uh, that kind of stuff, then I'm not going to have a very good finishing result. So uh, I don't get why it's racing me like this. Um, and yeah, it's the same in lap 17 here. It's like he's not even trying to make the corner, because uh, I'm getting used here as a as a break, pretty much as a wall. Um, and yeah, of course he can do this on F1 games um, as long as the contact model is this forgiving. But um, yeah, one day, of course, it won't be, and then it's gonna be every incident like this is race ending. Now I I understand as well that people will probably not race like this. Uh, when the contact model is like this, but again in the chicane, I'm ahead on turning and ahead on the apex, and then uh, there's not even he's not even trying to not push us off the road, and yeah, I get I get their frustrations when you're racing and you can't make the progress you want, but it it does seem to be like this is just against me, um, at least as as far as I saw this race, so. Yeah, I hope that uh, in the future we can race more like we did in Imola. Um, because, yeah, none of these incidents are my fault. And we will see in the Stewart results as well, that are not out yet, by the way, that I'm convinced I'm not going to get penalized for anything of this. Because I'm trying to not make content. I'm trying to not do anything of those things. But, uh, like, what, what are you even trying at this point? Because making a dive home in a corner like this, look at the angle... He has approaching the corner. He's completely on the inside. Um, and he's, he's not even... His front wing is not even past a rear tire. Like, I, I don't get why you would go for a move like this. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I hope, of course, Thomas realizes as well that all of those were his own mistake. Um, again, I don't have any hard feelings because incidents and bad moments are going to happen when you race. But it is a shame that uh, he drove like this um, because this crash caused I think two or three other people to uh, have front wing damage including Bari which again was good for us in the championship but um, yeah it's not it's not ideal of course so um, I hope in the future we can race cleaner because uh, Thomas is of course incredibly fast and I just want to have good battles with everyone um, but it doesn't seem to go that way at the moment so um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video nonetheless. Um, next week will be Jeddah. I'm gonna be back at the Formula 1 factory in Brackley at the Mercedes headquarters. So, um, can't wait to go back. Hope you guys enjoyed this video nonetheless. Make sure to like and subscribe for more league racing content, which is of course gonna be coming in the coming weeks. Um, and see you guys next time. Ciao! Yeah.